Hey guys, it's Brett Matsuri here and thanks for coming and watching this video training. So I want to peel back our curtains here a little bit and I want to share with you somewhat of an advanced strategy that ironically is actually pretty basic. I actually call this strategy the lost art strategy. You see, when I got in the business back in 1999, um, what I had to do, just like what other agents did, the MLS wasn't as advanced as it is today is, uh, and then a lot of you veterans will remember this, is previewing property, right? You had to preview property and you had to know the inventory, you had to know the market. And it's a lost art, but it's still very relevant today. And for those who actually do it, and they do it right, and you have a strategy behind it, and you have the effort behind it, and you just implement it, it will help you close one transaction a month, even if you're broke, right? You don't have to throw any money at it. You don't got to get full color flyers. You don't have to do any of that. So I'm going to share with you that exact core strategy right now. So I'm going to go over to my laptop and um, share with you what I got to say. All right, hey guys, so I'm over here on my laptop now, and this is where I'm gonna show you exactly this strategy. Now, this strategy is something that we call the 5-5-10. And you don't need to worry about what the name of it is and what it means, because as I explain this whole strategy, this philosophy, this, this core um, uh, strategy that we implement, then it will make sense on why we call it the 5-5-10. So, Going over here, number one is you want to first, you have to identify your primary market area. Now, uh, we recommend that when you choose your primary market area, you make where you live your focal point, unless you don't like where you live and you're planning on moving, then you should probably plan on where you're going to move and make that your primary focal point. You don't wanna put this much time, effort, uh, time and effort into this strategy if you're not going to be able to to take to benefit from it from a, from a long-term perspective so uh, number one you want to have your primary uh, area number two is your primary area market area needs to have at least 330 active homes for sale um, that is typically for where I live I live in Irvine California and that is about a two and a half to three mile radius and if, as you look here at my computer screen, you can see this is uh, this red dot is a focal point of about where I live. And this is about a two and a quarter uh, mile radius. And in this radius, you have 331 active listings. That's, that's the only search that I'm doing. That's the only thing I'm worried about um, is the number of active listings that are on the market. Now, you also want to make sure that the primary area that you you're doing actually has some movement to the market. So you don't want to choose an area or be in an area or try to sell in an, you don't, you don't want to dominate an area that's, that doesn't have homes that are selling. So a really quick way to determine whether or not something's moving or you check out the absorption rate, uh, a quick way to determine the absorption weight is to see how many closed transactions in this same area have closed in the last 90 days. Now, I've already went and looked this up. In this same area that uh, it, of a two and a quarter miles from my house, we have 331 active homes for sale as of right now. And in the last 90 days, we've had 253 closed transactions. Now, when you look at this, it's 100, uh, it's about, uh, what, 80 homes shy of almost the same number. But what we're seeing here is that once, if no new homes came onto the market, if zero homes came onto the market, we know that in just over a three month period of time, maybe three and a half to four month period of time, that all of these homes would completely have been sold, right? So that's what I want to look at when I'm looking at absorption. Of course, when they absorb a little bit faster, the faster that it goes through inventory would be the, the, the faster it moves through that inventory, the better. But this is not a bad place because the, the average sales price is pretty high and there's a, a lot of home selling. Uh, so this is actually a, a, a good market example. So that's what you want to do when you choose your primary area. Now I'm going to go ahead and erase 
what I just wrote. Now the coal, the the whole strategy here is to start working on dominating your market area. Now the strategy I'm going to share with you, I can tell you for being 20 years in the business, nobody does this to the level that they could. And by you going out and actually doing this, you're going to be able to take this whole strategy right now and implement it into your business. And you're going to be able to start rocking with it and start generating uh, business and start dominating the area uh, and becoming the local area expert. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this area of homes and you're going to print the list, right? Those are all the homes that are on the market for sale right now. And you are going to go and preview five of these homes a day times five days a week. So you're going to go and preview 25 properties per week. You're going to do that four weeks out of the month. So four times 25 equals times four is 100. So you're going to preview 100 of these properties in this area uh, each and every month. Okay, now just by doing that, you've already done outdone your competition, the other real estate agents. I'm fairly confident in saying that the majority, if not all of the real estate agents that are competing with you in this market have not previewed 100 homes in this confined area. It just doesn't happen. Now, you're going to do this for month two, which means that you now have 200 homes, and then you're gonna do this for month three, and you're gonna do 300 homes. So in the course of a three month period, you have previewed every single home that came onto this market. Now, assuming that no new homes came onto the market, um, then of course, and that's not possible, but you would have seen the whole inventory of those homes. But as more homes come onto the market, you're going to, those are also going to be on your list to go and preview. Now, why are we doing this? Let me go ahead and erase this screen here. Now, we know that if you go and look at five homes a day times five times a week, you're looking at 100 homes a month. Now, we know that 30, about 25 to 30%, let's say on the lower end, uh, let's say 25% of one of the homeowners will be home. So you're going to have conversations with 25 homeowners, right? Now, these are your ideal clients. Now, think about it. These are people who are living in your primary market area, which is, in my case, in this example, which is anywhere between, you know, zero and 2.25 miles from where I live. It doesn't get any better than that. I mean, if I was really motivated for the day, I could walk somewhere. And they want to sell their home, right? It doesn't get any better than that. Now, here's the caveat to that is that they're listed for sale, right? You don't want to infringe on anybody's uh, listing agreement. And nor is this what we're talking about, but having that many conversations on month one for 25 conversations, then month two, that would be another 25, so 50 conversations. And then month three would be another, a total of 75 conversations, and it's going to grow exponentially. Now, the reason why that's important is because number one is you are once you've seen 100, 200, 300 properties and you've actually looked at them, see a lot of people have become lazy in our business. They just look at the MLS and they look at the inventory. The problem with the MLS is that the only pictures that are on the MLS are the good pictures. The really bad pictures never make it to the MLS. It doesn't show that it's on a busy street. It doesn't show what the neighbor's yard looks like. And it most definitely doesn't show, you know, the power lines maybe in the backyard. So there's a lot of knowledge that you're going to get specifically from previewing property. And that knowledge gives you experience and that is value in the eyes of the consumer, in this case, in the eyes of a buyer or seller. Seller who's looking to sell in that area and a buyer who's looking to buy in that area. So when you start adding those conversations up, 
that is collective information that you're going to have, but we are in a market shift right now. Let me go ahead and erase all this. We are in a market shift. We are seeing inventory go up and we are seeing demand go down. Now, when we see this happening, the lagging indicator is that there's a downward pressure on pricing, but then we also see days on market rising. And when we see days on market rising, we're going to see an increased volume of expired listings. Now, expired listings is a pretty competitive space. Real estate in general is a competitive space. You, you add expired listings on that, you see a tremendously, uh, it, it increases exponentially. Now, as the benefit to that is if you went and previewed all 300 properties of these, some of these are bound to turn into expired listings. Now, the question is, once, once it turns into an expired listing, is a lot of real estate agents are going to be contacting them. A lot of real estate agents are going to be asking them for an appointment to see if they could perhaps relist the property. And most of the time, uh, some of the uh, homeowners that expire that have to sell, they're going to interview one, two, or three agents if they just don't relist with the uh, original agent. So you need to think about this of having that market knowledge is giving yourself an intrade track and a competitive advantage because if you end up one of these properties go to expire and uh, let's say that out of I don't know 25 home out of the 25 people that you've spoken to let's say half of them actually just relist or don't do anything with it that means that there's what 12 uh, homeowners that still want to sell their property let's say half of them relist with their prior agent that means that there's six of these homeowners that might you might be able to get an appointment with, right? You might be able to do a listing appointment with. And if those six, I mean, you sit down with all six of them, let's say they hire, they interview three agents, you and two others. Well, those two others didn't go and see, they don't have the market knowledge of these 300 homes that are surrounding the property that are, they, they haven't seen the home across the street or down the street or Mr. and Mrs. Jones who just came back on the market. They don't have that knowledge of the market. In fact, when you document that and you go and share that with them at the listing appointment, they're probably going to choose you because they want to choose the person who knows the most about the neighborhood and who, who can sell it the, be the best, right? So that's the one strategy and that's where the five, five comes in. So again, five homes, five days a week, right? Now, this is where we're going to give you your bonus. This is where you're going to amplify your efforts. Now, when you go and preview these properties, I'm going to erase all this. When you go and preview these properties, you've already allocated the time um, to go and preview these properties. Right? It's not going to take a whole lot of time. You're, you're going to have to call the real estate agent, set up the preview time, and then just go. But you've already, you've already scheduled the time. You've already spent the gas. So while you're there, go and knock on the doors of the 10 properties around the property that you're going to preview. Now, why would you do this? Well, let's talk about your ideal client. You need someone who is going to own a home if they're going to sell a home. And we know that when a property goes on the market for sale, that typically two or three more homes come onto the market. So, if you are going to preview a property that is for sale, there's a very good chance that the neighborhood, the neighbors around them might be, might be in the process of thinking about selling. But these are the people who own a home, they live in your primary target area, the only thing you need to find out is when they plan on moving. And the way that you're going to do that is you're going to go and knock on their doors. Now, you could knock on the five doors to the left, you can knock on the five doors to the right. You can knock on the three doors to the left, the two doors on the right, and the five across the street. It doesn't matter. The whole point is that you have to knock on 10 of the doors and then ask them or that they, if they know if the property is for sale and who they know that might be looking to move in the neighborhood and then ask them if they are, when do they plan on moving? 
A lot of times they're not going to, but you're building that relationship, right? You're getting that face-to-face -face contact, and if someone does say that they might be interested in moving maybe a year from now, well, now you've increased your center of influence by a factor of one person, right? So that's on another training. But if you go and you preview 10 properties a day times five days a week, that is 50 properties that you would have knocked on the door. Not all of them are going to be home, but you're going to, you're going to knock on the door. Now you times that by four weeks in the month, that gives you 200 doors that you've knocked on. And we know that if you knock on 200 of those doors, typically, let's just say in a low end, 25% um, of one of the homeowners is going to be open, is, is going to be home. That's typically what the range is. So that means that we have, out of 200 doors that you've knocked on, you would have had a conversation with 50 homeowners. Now, Brett, what if they're renting? Yeah, that's still a good lead because if they're a tenant in your primary area, primary market area, then maybe they want to buy a home. So that's a good buyer lead. So there is really no, no negative benefit to this. So now if you do that and you have, do that for one month, you have 50 contacts, and then you times that, say, by 10 months. Let's go ahead and clear this. If we have 50 contacts and we times that by 10 months, I say 10 months because um, you have to take out Christmas, holidays, vacations, sick days, whatever. So we're going to say that you've worked a solid 10 months. Well, guys, that's 500 conversations that you've had with your ideal client. And then from the preview and property, remember we said, uh, five properties times five days a week equals 25 times four weeks equals 100. And then you talk to 25% of them. So there's 25 times 10. That's another 250. So we had 250 here. In a course of a 10-month or, a, let's say, a calendar year, you've spoken to 750 homeowners in your primary market. Now, here's the question. Do you think that in this market area, in this two, 200, for this example, two and a quarter miles, if you spoke with 750 homeowners that live in your primary market area, do you think that maybe you might get some business off that? Do you think that some of these homes will expire and that you might be able to go on to their a listing appointment? Do you think that as you are knocking on the doors around the listings and sales that someone might want to maybe move or buy in the near future? Of course there will be, right? This is a contact sport. This is the easiest, most efficient strategy that anyone, that probably nobody has ever told you about because it's really a lost art. This is the kind of things that us real estate agents had to do um, 20 or more years ago, right? I was doing this 20 years ago. So that is the 5-5-10. So this is something that you should just take right now, go pull the list off the MLS, print the list out, go start previewing properties, go start knocking on doors, you will find leads and you will get business off of this. All right, guys, so that's it. That is the core strategy on how you can take the information that I just shared with you, take that right now, go identify your core market area and start implementing the strategy and you will start taking over, you will learn the market, you will dominate that market and you will start closing one transactions a month. Just go do it. Now, if you found value out of this video and you live in the Southern California market around one of our uh, core offices and you'd like to see how we might be able to help you grow and scale your business even more, that was just one strategy. There's a lot of different things that we do with our agents to help amplify those strategies to make things work much better. 
But if that's something that you're looking to do, then down below this video, there's a button that you can click on to schedule a consultation with me. So click on the button, it'll take you to a brief survey, and then you'll be able to schedule a consultation with me where I'll be able to sit down with you one-on-one, -on -one, talk about where your business is at, where it, you wanna take it, and how we might be able to help you get there faster. If that's something that you're looking to do, if that's something that you're willing to do, then click the button now, and I'm looking forward to talking to you. Take care.